okay, well, this is my uh, signature bass. Actually, it's a 25-year anniversary one, so they did a little thing here that says my name and 25th anniversary. And then we did lines in green and blue, because there's a line in To Be With You, waiting on a line of green and blue. So I thought, oh, how clever they put a line of green and blue, which actually that refers to a mood ring, how it would change from green to blue if the, somebody was happy or sad obscure oddball reference. You may win a few bar bets with that. I don't know. But anyway, it's, uh, this is my uh, Yamaha bass. It's, it was modeled originally after my original P bass that I had in Buffalo, New York for years and years and years and years. And that P bass had a 68 Telecaster bass neck on it, which is a monstrous, fat, manly, giant thing. So we modeled this neck after that exactly, the same dimensions. Um, and uh, the P bass was great and still is great, one of the greatest instruments of all time and always will be. But one of the things I had a problem with is when I would do a little bend, I don't know if you can hear this, but do the bend, the neck would shift in the socket side to side. And then the strings would be like this, and I'd have to snap it to get it back in. So we did a different uh, neck to body joint. Now this is, the, the, this is not the newest model. The newer one, we ha actually have bolts going in at, an, at an angle this way to pull the neck into the socket. It's not that way with this, but this is still rock solid. Two bolts from the back. The lip of this neck goes underneath this pickup and bolts in on the inside. So it's just it's rock solid. It never moves. It's, it's, uh, I've never had a problem with them shifting at all. But in no way is that a disparagement of the P bass because it's still the iconic V bass. You know, what, what are you going to do? So uh, we did that there to help uh, kind of accommodate me for the thing that I do with that bendy thing. And then over the years, I made changes on my old P bass. I, I scalloped the frets. I uh, didn't want to scallop them all because you lose too much wood and you lose a lot of sustain. So I just went down one, two, three, four, five, and just went halfway across because sometimes when you bend a note, you want to kind of get up underneath it to push it to really get that high G note. So you can get it like all the way up to a G by bending, but you got to kind of really get underneath there to get that kind of a bend. So that helps a little bit, though I play bases a lot and that's fine. Um, as a DiMarzio will power pickup on all my bases. This is a DiMarzio Model 1, which is originally designed to replace the EBO pickup on the Gibson bases. Neck position pickup, super deep low end, has its own output. Pickup volume tone. On the old EBO and Epiphone Rivoli bases, there was a little switch to get treble on, off of this pickup because it was so low endy, and that's what that is. It does the same function there. If you, if you, sometimes I need a little bit more treble on it if I'm using it in like a chordal thing, and I'll pop that in. So that has its own output there, goes to one amp. Uh, straight up willpower with just a volume control to this output to its own amp. There used to be volume and tone on the original P bass, but I, I think I read that you didn't really need the tone control and it was louder if you took it off. So I took it off. I don't know if it was louder or not, but I just did. So it's just got a volume out and I never used the tone anyway. Uh, and then that, that goes to a separate amp. Uh, the bridge on these was not countersunk. So this was countersunk at the custom shop. The new ones, it comes pre-countersunk. So it's just dropped in a little bit more. So the strings get a little bit closer to the body. And because I'm a, a right hand uh, finger player, it helps me if they're a little close. Uh, these pickups are, are uh, potted with epoxy. So they're a solid block. Uh, DeMarzi doesn't do that. It's not how they come. I do it myself. And then they're rounded off so that my fingers got a, a really cool uh, surface to play on uh, underneath the strings. Uh, the other feature of the Hipshot Detuner, drops that low E note down to a D. You can tune it to E flat, D, D flat, even down to a C, some people do. But the D is handy and easy, easy. And when it's not in tune, like now, it's got a little tuning thing on the back, you can just get it right, and you get it up. There, it's good, drops down to the low D now. And uh, that's about it. Uh, we did a graphite. Uh, this is a graphite uh, nut. I think on the new bases it's uh, Delrin or some, some strange uh, uh, material. Uh, the, the plastic would always make it. It was a hit this, do this hit on the base, you know, when I'm playing live. And a couple times it would crack, unknown to me, right underneath, right underneath where the string groove is. And I'd go, and the piece would go, bing! <laughs> and then the string would be there like this on the bass. I'd be wondering, why? what's not working? So I, I went to a material that was less likely to break like that. And that's basically it. Uh, the real feature of the instrument that I think is a strong point is the dual output. 
This is a, a, a like the old Gibson EBO basses. It's a super deep low tone. Uh, it's heard on a lot of great records. Paul Samuel Smith from the Arbors, he used an uh, Epiphone Rivoli bass, which had that same thing. Great bl bass player, huge influence on me. Uh, Mel Shacker from Grand Funk Railroad. I've seen uh, photos of him live with his jazz bass with the big EBO pickup there. Uh, Jack Bruce, of course. All the Hoffner stuff that's super deep low end, like on uh, uh, a little help from my friends that uh, uh, McCartney plays, that's the neck position pickup on the Hoffner. So it's similar tonality. And then uh, the, in the P bass position, iconic, regular, normal bass tone uh, through two amps. So I've always got the super deep low end. Even if I do some shenanigans on the high thing, it, I never lose the, what's underneath there. And guitar players are therefore are happy. That, 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 so I'm doing some wacky thing, but there's still low end going on. So that's, that's important. And uh, the newer version, I should, which I should have brought today, but I didn't because I was in a hurry. Uh, uh, they do the neck, different neck to body joint. They changed this pickup. They did their own version, which is a lot louder, and uh, it's different. I'm still getting used to it, but it, but it is a, like a high high five version of this. But this is still pretty good, though. I like this a lot. Um, and they did the vibration technology, where they vibrate the bass for I don't know how many hours to kind of break it in. And they artificially aged the body wood on the new version too. They have uh, literally Yamaha spent literally millions of dollars, not on. Not for me, not for my bass, but they just did it because they make a lot of instruments and they wanted to get, ooh, I just dropped my, uh, am I still on? Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they just, this is live, isn't it? Um, they uh, got some researchers and biologists and chemists and they, and they really researched why older wood sounds better. It has to do with the uh, sap crystallizing in the cells of the wood. So they came up with this process to make wood old and they put it in this, I, was, I saw the machine, it's this big long tube and a big railway of wood blocks go into it and it closes down and they do some mysterious thing happens and it opens up later and then it goes back into being cut into body shapes. And the new, the new uh, uh, attitude base, they have that artificially aged wood. And they also have a little bit different truss rod too, it's a little lighter. Some people complain that this, is, uh, this base is top heavy, but in fact it balances out from this point just right. Uh, and also, I usually have two wirelesses on it, so it's always in. But, but we, 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 you know, we listened to what people said, and that some people wanted the neck a little lighter in weight, but without losing mass. So we went with a lighter truss rod in the, in the newer version. But that's the only difference. And that's it. That's, uh, that's my uh, Yamaha Attitude Bass. I've, as, uh, I've been with Yamaha for decades now. The new version is, will probably be the last version we do, because I don't, can't think of any more improvements I want to do on it, other than maybe some new colors and some crazy stuff, a double neck or whatever. But uh, I've been with Yamaha forever. Their quality control is second to none. They have been, um, I've been to the factory and seen them made. They're made in Japan by hand for the most part. The bodies are cut out robotically, and, uh, but the frets are put in by hand, and uh, the guys who work on the bases are you know, been doing it for, you know, 50 years, these craftsmen. You could eat off the floor, literally, too, at Yamaha at the factory. It's clean and just, it's just rocket science there. And they're, so their quality control is second to none. So that's, uh, that's, the, that's the skinny on my base. And of course, I play through hard key amps. And uh, I mention that because where I am today, uh, I'm here because of hard key. And uh, the amp has a lot to do with it. You know, the, it's a hands, strings, bass, pickups, electronics, speaker, that chain every, at every point uh, is extremely important. And I've been with Harky now for, it's coming up probably on eight or 10 years, I think. And uh, those amps are just rock solid. I've, I've played them all over the world, in India, in Indonesia, in South America, in Russia, everywhere. And uh, uh, knowing uh, I can rely on this, I can rely on everything from my fingertips all the way to the end, where the, the speaker, where the Harky, where that sound comes out. And uh, it's a very uh, comforting thing to uh, be able to rely on it. Uh, so uh, that's the story of my bass. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you around.